Hi, I'm Jason Feedback. I just wanted to introduce myself. Uh, this is for EDL 853 Module 1 Personal Intro and uh, excited to kind of start working with you guys. Wanted to go through some things um, kind of about myself and some of my thoughts going into this um, this class that we're starting up. So um, these are some pictures of uh, me with my family. Uh, my wife and I are celebrating 21 years of marriage on June 12th. We're really excited about that. And we have three children. Brennan is 19. He's a freshman at Baker University. He's playing football and basketball. We have a daughter named Avery. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, Brennan. He's also wanting to get into education, so I'm real proud of that. Um, he's going to be a good one. Hopefully, we can hang on to him, get him into the field. Uh, Avery's 14. She's going to be a freshman at Spring Hill High School, and she she loves art. Uh, she loves sports, uh, basketball all the time. Um, and she's kind of a nerd, so someday hopefully she'll hire me for something. And then Emery is 12. She's going to be a seventh grader. She loves uh, every sport she's in, and she's also very, very social, probably a little bit too much at times. But we live in, uh, we currently live in Spring Hill, Kansas. It's just south of Olathe. And we have two dogs named Max and Skilo, and a cat I don't like to talk about because I don't think she's very nice or appreciative. So uh, moving on from there. Uh, professionally, I've been in education for 21 years. Started out as an English teacher at Pawnee Heights Junior Senior High School, where I taught sixth through ninth grade English and forensics for one year. Found out I wasn't very good at that and uh, just kind of moved on with life. But I was out there for five years, got my master's degree in school counseling, ended up picking up a job at Humboldt High School, where I was a school counselor there for five years. Went over to Chinu High School, those are both in southeast Kansas, where I was a a high school counselor, um, got the head football job there and um, switched over to PE, took my PE certification and I've been at Spring Hill now as a head football coach and physical education teacher going into my sixth year now. So uh, coaching all along the way, I started out as a GA at uh, Ottawa University. Now I, I've been coaching football for a while, um, track, and I even coached some middle school wrestling along the way picked up a lot of youth sports with my kids. It's been a really good experience for us. Uh, school experiences um, over the years, there's been a lot. You know, if you're in school for 21 years, you, you just kind of jump in committees and you get asked to do different things. But uh, I've been a school leadership committee, uh, presented at some uh, professional development things for our middle school teachers. I was a presenter at the Kansas State High School Activities Association coaching school. Also, uh, I've been heavily involved in a fellowship of Christian athletes. We started up Fields of Faith at two different schools we've been at. And uh, I'm also very involved with the Zero we Reasons Why campaign going on in Johnson County. And we're, we're fighting uh, suicide. We're, we're trying to, to eliminate to, uh, suicide in teens and community members. So uh, just a few things going on there. Uh, but I want to give you some thoughts with special education. Um, as a school counselor, I've worked closely with special ed teachers, uh, IEP meetings, schedules with teachers. I would sit down and go through individual schedules with kids, make sure that that worked for them, and then dealing with directly with students, um, you know, checking on them at lunch, making sure they weren't sitting alone, whatever, finding somebody that would partner up with them. Uh, one of the coolest things we did at, at Chanute High School was we organized a Special Olympic style basketball game, and, and I talked to the basketball coach. and. And he even let them borrow the school jerseys and shorts. And um, we, we used the aux gym and, and told teachers what was going on. It was the middle of school day. And there were kids and they had signs. They were holding up signs for their kids and, and had their names. And we announced all the guys and, the, and girls. Um, and then they got to play a game against, I think we played Humboldt, maybe Erie, a couple schools that were close to Chanu. But it was awesome. The gym was rocking. And I think it really did a lot to... Uh, kind of changed the culture at Chanute High School. And now I haven't been there for five five years now, but I, I, I've i seen some really cool stuff, uh, some of the repercussions, and I, I don't take credit for that, but it was a collaborative effort of getting people on, on the same page with that. We also took some kids um, to, um, there, was a, there was a Special Olympic basketball game, a skills competition. We took our guys there and they helped out with that for a day. Really good experience for them. 
Um, so when we're talking about an inclusive school culture, you know, school leadership drives culture. It's just how it is. Um, and I think probably the biggest part of, of leadership and school culture is building relationships with every student in the school. And you got to value kids. Um, you look at their strengths, build on their strengths. You know, you, 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 we always talk about, well, we got to fix this. We got to fix this. Well, let's let's work on building strengths, uh, building on the strengths of our kids. Um, creating peer support throughout the school. It's just not the special ed teachers. It's not just their job to watch those kids and make sure they get through. You know, if, if we're really talking about being a school community and and you know doing what's best for kids it's got to be everybody's job and we want to use inclusive languages for all races genders sexual orientations and we want to prohibit others from talking bad about groups in a negative way all right as a school leader it's 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 imperative to be visible in school and community events and then i don't think you can ever say um you know enough that all students have a place in our school and I think inclusion benefits all students and communities. Um, it, it, it helps not, and we don't want to talk about tolerance, but, but acceptance. And, and I think we just need more of that in our world today. So empowering students, you know, every student deserves to have high expectations. Um, they're not all going to have the same abilities and that's okay, but, but they can all have the same expectations um, for achievement. You know, believe in them, give advice, encouragement, and, and love. Uh, listen to them because their voices need to be heard. Sometimes they're the silent the silent kids, and we just kind of see them walking along the, the sides of the hallways, and, and they don't have the same schedule as everybody else. But we need, to, we need to hear their voices. We need to visit their classrooms, learn their names, and high fives are awesome, fist bumps, all that stuff. You should see their faces light up. And I, I think another part of uh, empowering students is allowing students to advocate for themselves, give them decisions in regards to their education, meet with them in regards to school and community issues. If there's issues going on, you know, have conversations with them. They have thoughts on that stuff. So plans and strategies for an inclusive culture. I think, uh, you know, individualizing instruction for students, you got to give kids opportunities to be creative. Again, building on their strengths. If they're good at, at verbal stuff, you know, maybe they don't need to write out this whole presentation. Maybe they can just present it verbally, whatever, whatever it takes to help them feel successful. Um, when we're talking about staff, we need to model the behavior we want to see from our staff. Um, celebrating students, you can't do that enough. Being positive and approachable, let me smile. Uh, collaborate with students, staff, parents, community stakeholders. There are a lot of people interested in what's going on in your school and give them some investment and cooperate with those people and, and, and watch what happens. Organizing staff training when opportunities are there and, and when you find an opportunity to do it, go ahead. You can't ever, you can't ever um, talk about inclusion enough with kids. And I think probably the most important and, and leadership's big, but the people you have right underneath you are, are just as important and that's hiring teachers that care about students. You can't make people care about students. You know, that's, that's something people have or they don't. And I think just hiring people um, is, is huge, hiring the right people and then cultivating that culture of caring. So we're talking about restructuring schools for inclusive education. Um, Givner and Falvey talked about the expectation that each student has to be able to learn and succeed or they can learn and succeed. Embracing diversity and students at risk and overcome the risk for failure through involvement in a thoughtful and caring community of learners. Everybody's going to fail at some point, and that's okay. Failure is a part of life. I think dealing with the failure is, is way more important than the actual avoiding failure. Each student has unique contributions offered to other learners. Find out what they are. Again, that goes back to relationships. Each student has strengths and needs. Find out what they are. Again, going back to relationships. Supports and services must be found throughout the school and not just a sped room or a certain school. I don't know if you guys have one at yours, but we don't. We just, um, we have some rooms, but we're really trying to include kids in everything we do. And then everybody has to work together to ensure each student has success. Thank you. Looking forward to working with you. Appreciate you guys. Have a good one.